The 15th meeting of the 23rd Council will please come to order. All council members are present this evening. Uh, Councillor Benton is running a few minutes late. And at this time, we will have a moment of silence. And during that moment of silence, I'd like us to keep uh, Jeremy Reynolds, who was uh, head of Habitat, or not Habitat, Joy Junction, for many years in this community and was a tremendous asset uh, to our community. And also, I will turn it over to Councillor Gibson. She, we have Troop uh, 505, and she will introduce them to come up and say the pledge. Right. Thank you, Mr. President. We are uh, very pleased tonight to have uh, Troop 505 from uh, District 7 with us today. And if you gentlemen would like to come up and uh, lead us in the pledge, come right down here to the podium, and uh, there will be a nice long line of you. And tonight we have their master also here. Uh, John Dennis, would you please come up with your troop? Let's first begin with a moment of silence for Jeremy Reynolds. Go and proceed. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Troop 505. Civic Plaza parking passes are provided for members of the public. You can, uh, you can obtain a parking pass from council staff at the sign-up table. We want tonight's proceedings to be as civil and as respectful as possible. Please do not make any personal attacks and please no applause or outburst during the meeting. The meeting will go much smoother if we are respectful of one another. We are now under uh, proclamations and presentations and the first proclamation is recognizing neighborhood leaders. Once the proclamation has been read, we'd like them all to come up to the podium to please come and stand in front of the uh, dais once we've read the proclamation and the entire council tonight uh, will be reading this proclamation. All the neighborhood association leaders, if you would please come to the podium. And after we read the proclamation, then we'll have you come to the front and have a photograph taken uh, with the council. First, we'd like to welcome you. I know you have been here many, many times. And the proclamation reads, whereas there are over 260 active neighborhood association homeowners associations and coalitions registered with the City of Albuquerque's Office of Neighborhood Coordination and Eric. Thank you, Mr. President. Whereas these neighborhood leaders are dedicated to maintaining the quality of life, safety, and sense of community in their neighborhoods and devote countless hours each week to have a positive impact on their communities. And whereas neighborhoods bring people together and help create communities where neighborhoods know each other and tend to look out for each other, creating a safer neighborhood, and? And whereas neighborhoods play an important role in building relationships with APD and local government officials, and? Whereas the city of Albuquerque relies on neighborhood leaders for representative input regarding legislation, for support for neighborhood projects, and for participation in community policing, and? And whereas neighborhoods accomplish this work by regularly communicating with those re residing, owning property, or having a place of business within their neighborhood, by proactively addressing challenges, protecting the quality of life within their neighborhood, and by planning neighborhood gatherings. Whereas August 7th, 2018 is National Night Out, which is a night where blocks, communities, and neighborhoods all across the country come together to build neighborhood relationships and take a stand against crime and and whereas, without 
the commitment and sacrifices of neighborhood volunteers, our city would be a less vibrant and less enjoyable place to live, work, and play, and... Whereas the City Council encourages everyone to renew their commitment to participate in neighborhood organizations in, in the interest of making our city a nicer place to live. <clears throat> be it proclaimed that the Council, the governing body of the City of Albuquerque, hereby recognizes the important work of neighborhood organizations by declaring the week of August the 6th, 2018 as Neighborhood Week and it encourages support for National Night Out 2018. We'd like to welcome all the leadership in our community for being part of this proclamation and thank you. We'd like one individual, if they'd like to come up and uh, make a comment, but not all 30 of you. <laughs> if not, we'd like you to come up and have your picture taken with the council. Jeanette, go ahead. What? Go ahead. You, you've taken the You're mic. There. You're there. <laughs> go. My name is Jeanette Baca. I'm from the Alamosa Neighborhood Association uh, president and uh, we've been a recognized neighborhood association for 25 years. Yes. Thank you. And the proclamations will be handed out in the foyer after uh, you're done with your pictures. Do you want another comment? <laughs> Dr. Vias, go right ahead. Yeah, I just, this is the way I look at neighborhood associations. I think it is, in this great country of democracy, I think it starts right here with the neighborhoods. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Joe. It's great to see with all the work that you do each and every day that you still have a smile on your face. Councilor Pena would like to also make a comment. As everyone's making their way to the seat, I just really want to congratulate. Jeanette came to the podium to speak, but Alamosa is, um, is actually having their 25th year celebration this year at West Fest, which is going to be, I think it's September 22nd. So um, please, everyone, join them in celebrating this huge milestone. Thank you, Councillor Pena. Uh, let's go to the next proclamation. That will be by Councillor Winter and Councillor Borrego. And the proclamation is recognizing nursing. And Carla Woodruff is here to accept that proclamation. Councillor Winter. Um, thank you very much. This is dated August 6, 2018. It says, whereas there is a statewide shortage of nurses in New Mexico with a vacancy rate in healthcare facilities expected to reach 57% by the year 2020, thereby requiring the state of New Mexico Health Department to incentivize nursing recruitment in the state. And whereas Albuquerque nurses engage in whole community health care, practicing and instructing in schools, community fairs, clinics, parks, and streets to vitalize the public through the power of regular diagnostics, health supplies distribution, and advice on healthy lifestyles and choices, and? And whereas Albuquerque nurses respect the individual dignity of patients, regardless of who is receiving the care, or from which nationality, ethnicity, religion, culture, socioeconomic class or the gender of each patient and whereas the nursing profession addresses ethical issues in everyday practice including protection of client confidentiality and research participants relationships with colleagues conflicts of interest and ethics and educational activities and whereas albuquerque nurses exhibit devotion to their profession obligations performing state-of-art medical interventions 
even when it, when it is impossible to obtain the patient's informed consent. And whereas the profession of nursing daily requires nurses to demonstrate compassion, altruism, and devotion and respect for human dignity, be it, pro be it proclaimed that the council, the governing body of the city of Albuquerque, hereby recognizes the nurses of Albuquerque and proclaims the month of August Albuquerque Nurses Month. And I would like to present this proclamation to Carla Woodruff, who is a UNM H radiology specialty nurse. And Carla, I'd ask if you'd like to say anything this evening on behalf of nurses. Thank you. Well, as you just said, my name is Carla Woodruff and I'm a nurse in the interventional radiology department at the University of New Mexico Hospital. I would like to thank the Albuquerque City Council and specifically Council, uh, Council Barrego for acknowledging the contributions of nurses in the Albuquerque community. It is an honor and a privilege to have a role in accepting this proclamation, just as it is an honor and a privilege to be a nurse, providing care for people at physically and emotional vulnerable times of their lives is both daunting and gratifying. In my seventh year as a nurse at UNMH, I have learned that nursing requires drawing upon the intellect and heart as a patient is both a body and a soul. And it requires a commitment to teamwork to offer the best possible care. I know from experience that the Albuquerque community is blessed with so many good nurses who put their heads and hearts into what they do and provide wonderful care I trust that today's proclamation will be an encouragement to them. It certainly is to me. Thank you again. Thank you, Ms. Woodruff. Um, I would like to just say thank you for your service to our community. It really is a service, and it's a service that uh, many of us could not undertake because it, I know it's a very difficult job, as I just lost my cousin just about two months ago, and I was with him at his death, but the nurses that were by his side were beyond exceptional. So thank you for your service to our community and the health of our community. Thank you. Thank you. Ma'am, would you like to come forward? Would you come forward, please? <laughs> Thank you, Carla. Uh, we have a presentation tonight, and that will be from Gerald Romero, the budget officer, regarding the latest GRT report. Welcome, Mr. Romero. Thank you, Mr. President. I have some extra copies. I don't know if. I see our economist is smiling, so that may be some good news for us tonight. <laughs> that means I'm in trouble. <laughs> Give me one sec. Mr. President and members of the council, the city received our final GRT distribution for the fiscal year 18. We received it on July 17th. This is the May activity that we accrue for the month of June. We had an unbelievable distribution from the state. June grew 26.4% over the previous June, which brought our cumulative growth to 4.1%. So going back a bit, if you'll recall when we started fiscal year 18, we had estimated 3% growth in the underlying base. Um, we revised that mid-year based on what we were seeing down to 1.7, and we finished the year at 4.1. Um, the majority of this, counselors, uh, is one time. If you'll recall, back in April, I believe, we had a dialogue about what we assumed was happening in terms of underreporting or misreporting in the area of uh, grocers. And so we do get a distribution for uh, the food hold harmless. 
And I think Councillor Davis, at your suggestion, Olivia Padilla Jackson, the Deputy Director of Finance and Administrative Services, uh, reached out to the Policy Division of TRD. And uh, as it turns out, a few emails back and forth later, uh, Jacques Blair, the City Economist, had already been in contact with the Audit Division. And they sort of intervened. We were looking at reaching out to grocers in a friendly manner with a flyer or a uh, postcard to let them know, you know, not reporting accurately, not reporting at all, misreporting had an effect on the community in which they live. We think that may have had, you know, some impact on what happened, what we assume <coughs> happened here, and, and there's some evidence of it. This is a huge adjustment for prior year underreporting, uh, primarily in the area of the food distribution. There was also an anomalous distribution in the fire, the fire insurance and it's just fire and insurance. Fire and insurance area fire as well, insurance. almost entire, entirely one time, as we assume. So this brings the year for the general fund about 8.2 million above where we thought we would be. Um, we think between five and six million of that is, is non-recurring. So um, very good news. Um, and I just want to uh, reiterate, though, that, that we do understand that a big portion of this is, is non-recurring. So. With that, I stand for questions. I have Dr. Blair here as well. Are there any questions for Mr. Romero or Dr. Blair? Councillor Harris. Thank you, and thank you, Mr. Romero. And there was a time, I'm not sure which uh, graph we're looking at, uh, well, because this is so jagged. And the year before, last fiscal year, um, not the, I guess this is the 18th fiscal year we just finished. Is that right, or the 19th? We just finished the 18? 18. 18 that we just finished, Councillor. And uh, in the 17 fiscal year, we had some rather strange spikes. And when we had a high spike, I think it was like in December or something, it was followed by a, a spike down. So, I'm, so this kind of is a little bit scary to me, having been here before. We're like, oh, goody. You know, <laughs> we got a, a real good, good uh, month distribution. It was followed with tax and rev the next month saying, oops, never mind. So uh, is there any concern that that could happen here? Um, Mr. President and, and Councillor Harris, we don't believe so. Um, that was the first task. Um, the city economist, um, first thing he was tasked with is find out if there's an error here, because we, we did remember those one or two times, at least since I've been budget officer, when that has happened. Um, and so the, the second conclusion was that we, we were trying to see how much of this is one, if it was not a mistake, which it was not, then how much of it is, is due to sort of a correction and how much of it is really underlying growth uh, in the base. And so, as I said earlier, we think between five and six million of the eight million for the general fund is one-time corrections. Councilor Gibson. So this certainly is good news and uh, happy for it. But I'm wondering if there are other um, uh, steep drops, um, either this year or previous year, as uh, uh, Councillor Harris was talking about, that we might benefit from, or? Uh, Mr. President and, and Councillor Gibson, I'll let Jacques speak to what, what we think, if there are any more corrections coming. Mr. President, Councillor Gibson, the, uh, I mean, there's, there's always going to be a lot of fluctuations in, in the mm -hmm. GRT. One of the things that's happened the last year that kind of accentuated it is one of the strongest growth sectors this year was the medical and healthcare sector, not the hold harmless piece of it but the, the medical sector. And some of that was people changing their filings due to a structural change in, caused by the uh, state actually changing the legislation. So I'm kind of coming into this backwards. No, okay. uh, th there may be things that we'll see coming up, but uh, right now it looks like there, we're, we're moving forward pretty well, and uh, we, we'll just see what happens. And then the legislature has their shot at 
changing things again in January. We'll see what happens there. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you. Councilor Borrego. Um, good evening. Thank you for that information. Um, I was recently at a conference in July, and one of the portions of the conference was related to the economy. And uh, one of the comments that was made was that we should probably be looking to expect a recession again in probably 2022, possibly 2023, thereabouts. So I just wondered if you had any comments regarding that or if you had any thoughts about how, I mean, you know, they always say error in the, in the conservative. So I just wondered what your thinking is regarding that. <clears throat> Mr. President, Council Borrego, I'll give my thoughts. I mean, obviously we, we, the economy, the national economy is growing uh, very strong right now. We, we do expect um, it to taper off and I, I fully expect there to be a recession, albeit not deep. Um, within the next two to three years would be my expectation. Um, remember, Albuquerque seems to lag going, you know, into and coming out of. Um, this has been a much longer recovery, obviously, to get to this point from the, the, the great recession we experienced seven, eight years ago. Um, I, I do just want to point out that the growth rate we're expecting in GRT for the year we just started, fiscal year 19, is 2.2%. At this point, we still believe that's a good growth rate, although now we're going to be growing on a higher base, assuming these adjustments have been corrected for the, for, and, and maybe an, an additional correction in the next month or two for, for additional food uh, abnormality in, in reporting. So, Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, I have one question, Mr. Romero, regarding the methodology that is being utilized. When you make the comments that there's going to be about five to six million dollars of non-recurring and then either two to three million of recurring revenues. How did you determine those numbers? What was the methodology that, yeah. Mr. President, uh, we basically looked, for instance, at the finance and insurance. There was a, definitely an audited return that came back and it, it dumped what would amount to about $2.6 million in general fund. And we get those all the time, but, uh, that, that's how that one was calculated. On the hold harmless uh, food, we went and looked at basically what we've been getting on an average basis and how much higher this was in this month. And that's why we kind of have a range because we're, we're not sure you know, exactly how much that was. I, plan to go up to Santa Fe and take a look and I may be able to find out when those payments were, were back paid from. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if I'll be able to do, get, get that uh, much information or not. That's fine, but appreciate your time, uh, Doctor. Mr. Romero, thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, let's move on to item four, the economic development discussion. There is none this evening. Uh, we will now go to item five. Administration uh, question and answer period. Councilors, are there any questions for the administration? Councilor Davis. <clears throat> Excuse me, and Ms. Nair, and maybe Mr. Melendrez, I just want to cover, I know uh, there's a citizen ballot initiative that recently sur submitted a, a whole host of 28,000 or so, I think, signatures for what they call democracy dollars for public financing updating uh, on a ballot initiative. I know the city clerk is working through those. Uh, Ms. Nair, I don't know if you have an update I don't, of just where that process is. And I was going to ask Mr. Melendrez to maybe give us an update because in previous years, that information has come back to the city council for some action. And I think we just wanted to update. There's been a change in the state law on how we do this and how we work with the county and hoping you all could give us an update on where we are with this process. Go to proceed. Uh, thanks, uh, Council President Sanchez, Councilor Davis. Uh, as of the close of business today, they had certified about 15,000 of the signatures and they've been working around the clock to make sure that we meet the deadline, which I believe we have s some set amount of time. I can't remember if it's 10 or 14 days after the, the signatures are submitted to certify, but we'll get it done on time. And, and then Mr. Melendrez, if you want to answer those questions or, or Mr. Aguilar can. Thank you, Mr. President, Councilor Davis. Um, previously, when these types of things would come to the city, Obviously, the charter requires that the uh, uh, 
initiative go out to a vote of the public. That's a requirement of the charter. So the next question has always been, how do you make an election happen on that particular question? And in previous years, um, before the Local Election Act took effect, which was adopted by the New Mexico legislature during this past section, session, before that time, the council had to authorize a special election which would run concurrently with the county's general election in order to get that at least proposed to the county for ballot placement. The special election rules have changed with the Local Election Act and there's no longer a role for the council in that regard. The Local Election Act contemplates that um, local ballot questions can be placed on general election ballots but specifically exempts them from the special election requirements. So there's not that role for the council anymore relative to passing an election resolution. So once the clerk uh, is done validating signatures, um, I think the city will need to work together uh, to get that simply over to the county with the validation of the clerk uh, with the request that it be placed on the general election ballot. Thank you, Ms. Melendrez. And, and Ms. Nair, please extend to the, the interim clerk what a great job she's been doing. I know she's been really conscious of the timelines here and has been really working with the, the proponents to get that done. And I appreciate everybody working over the weekend to, with Mr. Uh, Aguilar and others and Mr. Melendrez and Mr. Zaman to figure that out with the county and be sure we were conscious of those deadlines and it looks like we're on track to get that qualified and on the ballot. So thanks everyone for working on that. And I appreciate that update, Mr. President. I think it's important for us to just know how those laws have changed and why we don't have to do that anymore. Thanks. Thank you, Councilor Davis. Councilor Borrego. Um, good evening, Ms. Um, Mayor. Um, so I was trying to get uh, for one of my constituents the number of police officers, if we've increased and what those numbers are currently, and also what if any specific changes have been done to training and rec recruitment. So I, and I didn't see the chief in the audience, so I just was trying to get some of that information. Ms. Mayor. Thank you, Council President Sanchez, uh, Councilor Borrego. We'd be happy to give you a, a more detailed briefing at the next meeting if, if I could have a chance, but I know that we have uh, 25 laterals um, getting ready to, to go through the queue to be seated in, a, in an upcoming lateral class. I think we have some folks that are already seated for that class, so I don't know the combined number. Uh, in terms of recruitment, uh, there's just been a much more active recruitment effort, including um, changes in staffing uh, at the academy, which is where the recruitment occurs. Uh, we've also been just doing more outreach to neighboring departments. Of course, you know, we don't want to steal everybody else's officers, but in some ways there are just a set amount of officers in the state, and we want to get uh, up to our full staffing totals, and I'd be happy to provide more details at the next meeting. Um, if, if any way I could get the numbers prior to the next meeting, just because I'd like to respond to my constituent. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, I think that's very important because beginning July the 1st, the uh, sales tax increased by three-eighths of a cent. And I know that the public wants answers on what we are planning to do and some of our plans. I'm glad to hear there are over 25 laterals, plus the recruitment is working out well. But again, I think we need to make sure that those numbers start to increase quickly, and we need to also inform the public that those numbers are starting to increase. Uh, Councilor Sanchez, yes, uh, Council President Sanchez, completely agreed. I think you know we have a sort of template um, report that we plan to provide to the council and then to the public on a monthly basis. We'll have that for the next meeting, but Thank we you, can Ms. also Nair. provide the numbers in the interim. And I'd like to make sure that the public does get a copy of that information. Thank you. Any other questions for the administration? Seeing none. Let's uh, move on. We are now uh, on item number six, the journal. Council Vice President Harris. Thank you, Mr. President. I move approval of the uh, last uh, June 18th. Uh, June 18th journal. Yes. We have a motion and a second to approve the uh, June 18th journal. Any questions? See none. All those in favor, signify by saying yes. 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 Those opposed say no. That carries unanimously. Uh, we are now under communications and introductions. Are there any changes to the letter of introduction? Councilor Jones. Thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to move that the rules be suspended for the purpose of placing R53 on tonight's agenda for final action. R53 is releasing general fund reserves for specialty pay for paramedic firefighters and providing an appropriation in fiscal year 2019 to the fire department. This will require two thirds votes. Uh, there is a motion and a second on the floor. All those in favor signify by saying yes. Yes, yes. yes those opposed say no, that carries. Uh, we are now, uh, Councilor Benton. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the rules be suspended for the purpose of placing R54 on tonight's agenda for final action. 
R54 is supporting the continuation of service on the current route of Amtrak Southwest Chief by rail through northern New Mexico on its present route alignment and supporting fe federal funding in support of maintenance and safety improvements along the route. We have a motion and a second to suspend the rules for the purpose of placing R54 on tonight's agenda for final action. Any questions? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying yes. Yes. Yes, those opposed say no. That carries unanimously. Councillor Benton. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the rules be suspended for the purpose of introducing R56 and placing it on the August 20th Council agenda for final action. R56 is amending committee substitute R1818 to extend the deadline for a committee of public and private entities to conduct an analysis of the 2018 International, International Energy Conservation Code with intentions to replace the currently adopted 2009 Energy Conservation Code. We have a motion and a second. Any questions? This will require two-thirds votes. All those in favor, signify by saying yes. 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 As opposed to say no, that carries unanimously. Councillor Benton. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the rules be suspended for the purpose of introducing O26 and referring it to the Finance and Government Operations Committee. O26 is relating to the redevelopment, leasing, and sale of a metropolitan redevelopment project and issuance of metropolitan redevelopment revenue bonds payable from rental payments, therefore, approving the metropolitan redevelopment application entitled Bank of the West MR bond application authorizing the acquisition of land and existing improvements in the construction of a building within the downtown 25 metropolitan redevelopment area and authorizing disposition by lease and sale the city's interest such project to Roma Fourth Capital LLC its successor and assigns authorizing the issuance and sale of city of Albuquerque New Mexico metropolitan redevelopment revenue bonds Bank of the West Center project series 2018 and the maximum principal amount of $30 million to provide funds to finance a portion of the cost of acquisition and construction of the project, authorizing, authorizing the execution and delivery of an indenture, lease agreement, bond purchase agreement, the bonds, and other documents in connection with uh, the issuance of uh, the bonds and the project, making certain determinations and finding related to the bonds and the project, ratifying certain actions taken previously, and repealing all actions inconsistent with this ordinance. <laughs> So moved. Okay. <laughs> we have a motion and a second to suspend the rules for the purpose of introducing O26 and referring it to the Finance and Government, Government, Government Operations Committee. Any questions? See none. All those in favor, signify by saying yes. 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 Those opposed say no. That carries unanimously. I move that the rules be suspended for the purpose of introducing R57 and referring it to the Finance and Government Operations Committee. R57 is making funding in connection with the Lower Petroglyph Public Improvement District Resolution authorizing the issuance and sale of special levy revenue bonds, ratifying and approving the issuance and the sale of Lower Petroglyphs Public Improvement District Special Levy Revenue Bonds Series 2018, and sustainability consistent with the requirements of the City Ordinance Enactment Number 0-223-0-2003-12 and the City Council Resolution Number R-2012-47, Enactment Number R-2012-35, and amending the development agreement and the formation resolution. I move to do pass. Second. We have a motion and a second by Councilor Jones. Any questions? See none, all those in favor signify by saying yes. Yes. Yes, those opposed say no. That carries unanimously. Councilor Borrego. Thank you, Mr. President. Mine won't be quite as long. I move that the rules be suspended for the purpose of introducing R58 and referring it to the Finance and Government Operations Committee. R58 is making findings in connection with the Saltillo Public Improvement District Resolution authorizing the issuance and sale of special levy refunding revenue bonds, ratifying and approving the issuance and sale of the Saltillo Public Improvement District Special Levy Refunding Revenue Bonds Series 2018 as substantially consistent with the requirements of the City Ordinance Enactment Number 0. 2003-12 and the City Council Resolution Enactment Number 169-2003. We have a motion and a second. Any questions? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 Those opposed say no. That carries unanimously. Councilor Benton. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the rules be suspended for the pur purpose of introducing R59 and placing it on the August 20th Council agenda for final action. R59 is to acquire property, plan, design, and construct a single site supportive housing project for persons who are suffering from behavioral health issues and in need of housing, and adjusting Department of Family Community Services fiscal year 2018 City Housing Fund appropriations. We have a motion and a second by Councillor Jones. 
Any questions? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying yes. Yes. Yes, those opposed say no. That carries unanimously. Uh, there are no reports of committee this evening. Uh, we are now under deferrals and withdrawals. Councilors, are there any deferrals or withdrawals at this time? Uh, Councilor Gibson. Mr. President. Um, excuse uh, me. Uh, we need a vote on the letter of introduction as it as amended. Okay, Councillor Harris. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I move for approval. We have a motion and a second for the approval of the letter of introduction. As amended. All those in favor signify by saying yes. Yes. Yes, those opposed say no. That carries unanimously. Okay, let's go back to deferrals and withdrawals. Uh, Councillors, are there any deferrals or withdrawals at this time? Councillor Gibson. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I, uh, I move um, a deferral until October 1st for Committee Substitute 3 of O50, Ordinance 50, and the, uh, it's amending the City of Albuquerque Code of Ordinances, Article 6 and Chapter 13, ROA 1994, the Pawn Brokers Ordinance. We have a motion and a second for deferral until October the 1st of Committee Substitute 3 of O-50. All those in favor? Yes. yes. Say yes. yes. Those opposed say no. That carries unanimously and I'd like to defer also OC-8. That is the renewal of contract with Edward uh, Harness, Director of the Civilian Police Oversight Agency. And I'd like to defer that until August 20th. Second. We have a motion and a second by Councillor Davis. Any questions? See none, all those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 yes, those opposed say no, that carries unanimously. Are there any changes to the consent agenda? I will pull uh, item B, EC 133 off the consent agenda. Council Gibson. That is correct. Okay. And for those individuals on tonight's consent agenda who are being uh, appointed to serve on a board or commission. If you're here this evening, please stand and be recognized. If you're here in the audience, and if you're not here, we want to thank you for your service and wanting to participate in local government. Councillor Harris. Thank you, Mr. President. Well, I will, I'll, yep. I'll go and move the letter of uh, the, I will move approval of the consent agenda. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 Those opposed say no. That carries unanimously. And we have pulled uh, Mr. item. President. Mr. President. Yes. I apologize for interrupting. Uh, I just wanted to get a clarification on 018-20. Um, is that going to be withdrawn, Councilor Benton? Um, it's, it's on the consent agenda. That Mr. President, um, that yes. item is noted as withdrawn by sponsor on the consent agenda, and with your approval of the consent agenda, that withdrawn is accepted. That should be automatic. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, correct. You. Okay. Thank you. Okay, now we let's go back to item EC 133, the, the mayor's appointment of Ms. Kara Grant to the Lodgers Tax Advisory Board. I move deferral until the November 5th meeting. We have a motion and a second by Councillor Gibson. Any questions? See none. All those in favor signify by saying yes. 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 yes those opposed? That carries unanimously. And we are going to move the agenda around just a bit. Uh, the next order of business uh, will be under, uh, it will be item 15, other business. If a councillor wishes to attempt an override of the mayor's veto, they will make a motion to override. If no motion is made to override or if six votes are not ob obtained, the mayor's veto will be sustained. Uh, this is uh, EC-169, veto of 0-18-19, approving a project involving Albuquerque's, Albuquerque's Investors LLC and Top <coughs> Golf USA. But before we go to a vote, we have uh, several individuals that are here to speak. Uh, there will be a two-minute time limit. Uh, the bell will turn yellow at a minute and 30 seconds, and at two minutes, that means your time has expired. I will call uh, the first five names up, and once your name has been called, we have seating available for you in the front. Uh, please come forward uh, so you can be prepared to speak. Uh, the first speaker is uh, Downey X, followed by Rudolph Serrano, followed by Tamara Pernoy, followed by James Cook.
Welcome, sir. My name is Downey X. I was here on March the 5th and watched as discussed as eight of you passed a re a regressive tax on the citizens of Albuquerque. Only one of you, Mr. Winter, showed any backbone and voted against further straddling the people of Albuquerque with heavier tax burden. I have not heard anyone from our poorer communities, i.e. Borellas Martinez Town in the International District, clamoring for a golf venue. These are the communities that will suffer the most from these ta uh, tax money giveaways. It's obvious you care little about the poor people of these neighborhoods. Top Golf sends its <laughs> gaggle of corrupt pencil neck lawyers in their cheap, ill-fitting men's warehouse suits to bribe and pay off city officials. It's all a well-planned scam to go from city to city to see what suckers take the bait. To Top Golf, uh, Top Golf just got $5 million tax breaks from Arizona. Albuquerque Investors LLC is run by Hussein Lahad from Florida, whose assets are worth over 480,000. He only sees the taxpayers as an easy way to increase his wealth. So let's be honest, golf is a rich man's game. The working family that can barely make ends meet hopes they have enough money to buy their kids school supplies. They depend on handouts, i.e. assistance leagues, and in hopes that their child will have a new pair of shoes to start the school year. They'll foot the bill for the doctors, lawyers, and the fat cats with their Corvettes, Benzes, and BMWs can play. Shame on all eight of you. You all, might, you all might have to try to grow a spine. Sitting there, you all show a depraved indifference for the citizens of Albuquerque. Next speaker, Rudolph Serrano. Uh, good evening, uh, Council Sanchez, uh, members of the city. Uh, we have a, a tough night tonight. You know, we have to decide uh, more than a golf course, uh, the destiny of the city and where we're gonna go in politics. And uh, I'm a big fan of Mayor Keller. You know, I believe in, a, in, in his perspective. I do believe in you guys too. I know you for more, maybe 10 more times the time I know him. And, uh, and, I, and I, I am with that decision, but if he beat to us, it's because of something. The guy is a genius in math. You know, and he's doing the math, and his perspective, you know, of uh, buy local, do local, keep the economy growing here, goes with my uh, new revolution. We are living a new era, and he's jumping into the new era, and we are staying in the old era. We have to decide tonight if we're gonna be the old politics, or we're gonna jump in, into, into the risky business of uh, just trusting our people and just staying in, with our people. So you guys have a tough night tonight, you know. <laughs> I, I know it's hard for you because your careers are, uh, you know, in, in jeopardy tonight. You know, you, you guys have to decide the destiny of, uh, of what's gonna be tomorrow. Are we gonna work with him the next uh, years? Are we gonna give him a chance? Or we're gonna cut him before we give him a chance? That's what you're deciding tonight. Have a good evening. Tamara Portno, followed by James Cook, welcome. President Sanchez and council members, I'm Tamara Portnoy, the owner and developer of Cool Springs Trampoline Park. We are currently working to open a new location at 5205 San Mateo Boulevard Northeast, a mile and a half from the proposed Top Golf location. Mayor Keller correctly vetoed the Top Golf giveaway for a second time, and I hope the council understands the giveaway of taxpayer funds to Top Golf is both unnecessary and fiscally reckless. Top Golf does not meet the requirements to be a LIDA funded project with respect to jobs or wages. Top Golf claims it will produce 350 jobs and have a payroll of 4.5 million annually. Breaking that out, that's 25 salary jobs at $60,000, 1.5 million. 123 full-time jobs, less the salary jobs, is 98 full-time jobs at 32 hours a week at $8.95, 1.46 million. The remaining 1.54 million among the 227 left part-time jobs would create a maximum of 14 hours per person at 895. That is below the leader requirement for 20 hours a week. A non-salaried full-time employee's annual income would be below the federal poverty line for a family unit size over one. This triggers food stamp and other welfare specifically prohibited under LIDA. All the non-salaried positions are minimum wage and below what the fast food industry currently pays employees. Any rise in salaried earnings or full-time rates results in fewer part-time people or fewer part-time hours. 
All but the salary positions fall below the Indian industry median for Albuquerque, and there is no requirement that salary positions be local people. Top Golf could bring in salary positions from out of state, leaving the city with no beneficial job creation at all. Do not give away taxpayer funds to an out of state business when you have local businesses fulfilling family entertainment needs in the exact same place and who are not seeking taxpayer funds. Providing taxpayer money to Top Golf is a reckless giveaway of taxpayer money. Mr. Winter, I am a constituent of yours and I am requesting that you reject this reckless waste of taxpayer money. Thank you. Next speaker, James Cook. President Sanchez and council members, I'm James Cook, an attorney and businessman who has lived in Albuquerque since 2001. I support Mayor Keller's veto of the Top Golf Incentive Resolution because I believe that the incentive package proposed overstates significantly project benefits to the city. It transfers taxpayer dollars to an entity that does not meet leader requirements. It harms Albuquerque businesses that will have to compete against a government subsidized out of state business. The incentive resolution states that the net GRT benefit to Albuquerque is estimated to be just over $5 million net of total incentive. The total city GRT over 20 years of top golf revenue plus the construction cost GRT only amounts to 5.535 million. Backing out the incentive of 1.84 million from GRT and the $500,000 grant, the estimated total net GRT of the city will be less than 3.2 million. And that's over a total of 20 years. The incentives come from current dollars. The purported benefits flow to the city over a 20 year period. If the effects of even the current moderate inflation rate are considered, the net benefit to the city is near zero and could easily be negative if inflation rises. It has also been estimated that top 60% of top golf's revenue will be new to the city. Even if that exceedingly optimistic estimate is accurate, that means $6 million of annual revenue will be cannibalized from existing businesses. This will clearly harm existing businesses and may cause some of them to fail. I created a brief list of questions that need to be answered in order to perform even a perfunctory due diligence. I offer a copy to every council member and anyone else who would like a copy. These questions should be answered and published to the public thoroughly discussed and debated before the council votes on the mayor's veto. A failure to do this, I believe, is a breach of the fiduciary duty that this council owes the taxpaying public. Thank you, Mr. Cook. Norm Strifles, followed by jo uh, John Olmsted, followed by Ron Bohannon, followed by Steve Abraham, followed by Jim Trump. Or Jim Trump. Welcome. Okay. President Sanchez, counselors, um, I want to thank those of you who did respond to our phone calls and, and in-person meetings um, concerning funding of uh, this out-of-state corporation. I am one of the investors here, grew up here. All of our investors are local. Um, we don't understand why you want to fund a multi-billion dollar corporation that doesn't need the money when we're not asking for anything ourselves. Um, I just think it's opening up a Pandora's box on this LIDA, and we believe legally that it is, it is uh, not going to, or it's going to be challenged, and there's going to be a lot of issues with it down the road, setting a precedent that is uh, it's not going to be good for the city. So again, I'm asking you to not override the mayor's veto. I'm asking you to support our local businesses, our local men and women here that raise families here, grow up here, that are offering a similar product and uh, not asking for any financial assistance. Thank you for your time. Thank you. John Olmstead. Okay, my name is John Olmsted, and basically my comments are this. Uh, gross receipts taxes and property taxes uh, was recover certain costs of, of the government, and in fact, for the city of Albuquerque, it's the lion's share. Special deals exempting businesses from GRT and property taxes result in less income for government to fund itself and must be decided carefully. Top Golf is an entertainment business owned out of state. 
It competes for local disposable income dollars with other local businesses, including restaurants, amusement parks, concert venues, bowling alleys, and the like. Benefits uh, was it applied to Dopkoff place those other businesses at a competitive disadvantage for reasons that have already been outlined. Uh, Top Golf does not notably expand the economic pie, i.e., it does not create jobs that provide uh, for manufacturing new jobs to increase the economic pie. The full time jobs that uh, are, are being proposed here, uh, the pay is not sufficient to allow new job holders to avoid. Uh, other forms of welfare, such as food stamps, Medicaid, low-income housing vouchers, and the like. The part-time jobs uh, actually are even worse. Therefore, I strongly recommend was it, uh, uh, not sustaining, or excuse me, not, not uh, uh, overriding the mayor's veto uh, with regards uh, to the deal that is being proposed for Top Golf. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ron Bohannon. Ron Bohannon, 5571 Midway Park. I'm here for you to uh, urge your support to override the mayor's veto uh, of this. Uh, we've uh, discussed this at uh, length. Um, the ADC went through it at length. Um, I think the numbers speak for themselves. Um, if you look at other communities and what they've done in other communities, it speaks loudly. If you go down to El Paso, which it's almost a year old now, it's still phenomenal. So I urge your support to override the veto. Councilor Harris has a question. Mr. Bohanna. Hey, Mr. Bohanna, thank you. Um, in the project participation agreement, it says that Albuquerque Investors LLC is going owns the land. Is that true? Uh, they will own the land. It's under okay. purchase. Oh, it's under purchase. Okay, so they don't own it now. They don't currently own it. Okay, it's under I, contract. I, I was looking at the land records. It doesn't look like they actually own anything. But okay, but they will own the land? Correct. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Steve Abraham, followed by Jim Trump, Trump followed by Mike Alvarez, followed by Lisa Urea. Council President Sanchez, counselors, my name is Steve Abraham. I was born and raised here in Albuquerque, New Mexico. I'm here to uh, ask you to support Top Golf. Uh, we need more family entertainment. We need the GRT, as we were speaking about earlier, the property taxes, and jobs. I mean, we, uh, we have more on welfare in the state than we do have working, and that's not a good place to be. And this will lead to growth, no doubt about it. I mean, when I go to uh, see my grandkids in Arizona. I go to a Top Golf every time. There's two of them there. There's one in uh, Colorado. There's one in Texas. So all I would like to say, you've seen me many times here before, to uh, uh, support Top Golf and to override uh, the mayor's veto. Thank you. Thank you. Jim Trump, welcome. Thank you. Jim Trump, uh, Mr. President, Councilors. It's been a long ride. We've been here many times. I want to thank your support, uh, thank your efforts in trying to do the right thing for the city. I am requesting you to override the veto. Thank you. Thank you, Mike Alvarez. Followed by Lisa Urea, followed by Tad Naminsky. I've been sitting here and listening to all the conversations. I know that Top Golf is in Arizona, Texas, and all them other states. But you've got to realize that all these other states are paying people 14 to $18 an hour, and we're not doing that. In fact, a lot of the people that are here working got to support themselves with two or three different jobs to make ends meet. And everything that I've discussed so far, like the art, I told you it wasn't going to work. And what happened to the art? We're still waiting for, to see the buses. And everything that you've done so far in the eight years have been a slop. You've been buying property for uh, rental properties, and a lot of the rental properties are still empty. So you want to spend another $30,000 or $30 million for Top Golf. We got 12 golf courses here in town, and if it wouldn't be for the memberships that they're paying to go play golf, the golf uh, companies wouldn't be making any money. 
And here you want to invest on a top golf to think that people are going to go play golf? Who's got time to go play golf? Here you already spent $1.7 million for a bowling alley that still hasn't been finished. And, and when I go talk to people that are running bowling alleys, they said it wouldn't be for the bear sale. They wouldn't have money to pay their bills. You got to investigate on things that you guys are doing. Not somebody come and tell you, I'm going to sell you a, a monkey that's going to give you a lot of milk for a couple of years, and you're going to put in $1.5 million to get a monkey that gives you milk. That's just outrageous. Don't make no sense. And that's exactly what's going to happen with this top golf. It's not going to work here in Albuquerque because people are not making $14, $15, $18 an hour like in Tucson. Texas and other states that can uh, afford this top golf. They have money to pay this top golf company cash. We don't have that. I don't care what this other gentleman said, how much money you have in the bank. Thank you. Lisa Urea, followed by Tad Naminsky, followed by Keenan Urea. Welcome. Thank you, President uh, Sanchez, counselors. Um, my name is Lisa Allen Urea. I live at 7433 El Moro Road, Northeast. I've lived in Albuquerque since I was six years old, which is getting to be a long time now. Um, I'm here to ask you to override the mayor's veto. I am the broker for the site at the southwest corner of Montano and I-25. We have worked six years to get a tenant of this status to come and take a look at Albuquerque, much less be this driven to go through the arduous task of the last year. That tells me a lot about the tenant. It tells me that this tenant has done their background search. They are confident that they're going to make the numbers that they've told you they would make, and they'll contri contribute to the GRT as, um, as promised. The other thing is we're at a precipice in this deal. And when I work in real estate, I tell my te uh, the folks that I work for, we didn't come this far just to come this far. We're here to get it done. And I ask you to override the mayor's veto and get it done and continue to support the incentives for Top Golf. Thank you. Thank you. Ted Naminsky. <clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> My name is Ted Naminsky. Well, first, progressive taxation. How sweet is it for that's what they're doing? Uh, politician, local. Well, speaking about local, uh, local business, what is local businesses? In, in my, where are they at? They have to give it to uh, outside businesses, out of state, like Mayor Barry? Oh, yes, I am. I agree with uh, uh, Mayor Kell, uh, Tim Keller, for one thing. So anyway, yes, I support him, of course. What kind of job they creating? Under 30 hours? Minimum, like McDonald's, Burger King? McDonald's, Burger King, don't ask for any money. I'm sorry, but it's a bunch of crap. Now, oh well, how far? Well, Lebron is, it, it is mental disease. This is sickness. Let me tell you that. Or oh, are you? you? You're not using. Look at them. Looking non stunned. <sighs> well, I'm just running off. Oh, Council Harris. Listen, they don't own land. They don't own land. They're going to be on. Did, did, did you hear? Leo Star Broker was here supporting. No, they're going to be on the mortgage. Are you going to file in? Kiss goodbye, they tell you. Thank you. Thank you. Keenan Urea, followed by Dr. Una Medina Olmsted, followed by uh, Guy Watson. Welcome. Uh, hi, Council. My name is Keenan Urea. I'm here um, on behalf of my age group to tell you guys that. <coughs> Um, please bring Top Golf to town because uh, you know all my friends. They seem to be leaving town in uh, you know by the troves, and Top Golf would be a great place for uh, people in my age group to get jobs at. Um, I have talked to a lot of people um, 
in my age group and lower that all um, were excited to hear that Top Golf was coming to town. Um, all of them seemed that they wanted to get a job at Top Golf. Um, so, you know, that would keep a lot of uh, younger people in town, which would uh, keep a lot of money in town because, um, you know, those kids would stay in town for their lifetime. And if you count a lifetime of uh, jobs and a lifetime of money staying in town, uh, I feel like it would be, uh, you know, a good, a good decision. So thank you for your time. Uh, that's all I have. Thank you. Dr. Una Medina Olmstead, welcome. President Sanchez and city councilors. Uh, we've heard tonight about the reverse Robin Hood, robbing from the poor, giving to the rich. We've heard uh, a real estate broker who says that Top Golf is going to make their numbers. Well, I was on the due diligence committee for the New Mexico Angels Investors in 2009 and 2010. And what I have to ask is, what kind of cost per square foot are we looking at? How are they going to make their numbers? Well, at $42 million divided by 65,000 square feet, which I just called Scottsdale and Gilbert, and all the top golfs are the same size. So we're looking at 65,000 square feet, which is $646 a square foot. That's two times the cost of a retail center. There's uh, shops at Legacy under construction right now at 5101 Lang Avenue Northeast. $3 million divided by 8,700 square feet is 344 square feet, dollars per square feet. Well, this top golf is looking at twice that. And then, okay, so let's take the most expensive home built in the most expensive part of New Mexico the most expensive home built in Santa Fe is built at $500 a square foot. So, you know, we're looking at 30% higher than the most expensive home. So you multiply that by 65,000 square feet and you've got 10 to $20 million that's disappeared. Who's it going to? President Sanchez, who's getting that 10 to $20 million extra? You could take one or two million dollars for each district and put it into the schools. I've heard rich kids say it's fun. I've heard rich men say it's fun. But I hear the poor people crying. And I'm begging you, don't do this. Thank you. Guy Watson, followed by Michael McGinnis, followed by Kathleen Burke, followed by Rosendo Nahad. Welcome. Hi, my name is Guy Watson, retired professor, activist in town. Um, President Sanchez, council. Um, I'm afraid that one of the most disturbing things to me was art. And I'm looking at that and going, you folks put that through. And now I'm looking at something that didn't go through the mayor's vetting process, but went through a political process through the council. That doesn't seem like the right way to go about accepting or rejecting a proposed recreational site. Um, I'd like to say I support the mayor's veto. And I would hope maybe some of you would change your mind on that. Um, this was not brought out to the public. I know there's people who have said, my gosh, this has been going on for a long time. Um, not where I live, not up and down my street where I ask people what they thought of it. I work with about 1,300 people, most of them young, and many of them are working two jobs, some three. Uh, they're working for minimum wage. The wages at Top Golf are terrible, and many of those will be part time. If you look at online, you can do this. Go look at the reports by people working for Top Golf in many of the cities. Biggest complaint no weekends, no consideration of their time, and no matching their schedules to the schedules they need to work. Also, complaints about income, the salary. Salary was low. Uh, they like the company. They like the fun. I like the idea if they come in on their own. The incentives are too high should be zero. The um, fact that it's not local is something that I voted and worked for Tim Keller to become mayor. And he did become mayor. And what he promised us was he would work, he would work very hard to keep local support of local businesses. We lost to some businesses on Central because of art. Those people are out. They didn't get any subsidies from you folks. Thank you. I support the veto. 
please do the same. Thank you. Michael McGinnis, followed by Kathleen Burt. Good evening, Council, and thank you for the opportunity to stand before you tonight. Uh, I've heard a lot of arguments, uh, both, both sides, while sitting here, and, and there's nothing I can add to them, I'll tell you, but um, the, the educated facts and figures that have come up before you and as their evidence of you know, how beneficial this uh, program is going to be to me is as plain as the nose on the face. You know, it's, uh, this is not going to be what it is promised to be, all right? Uh, I have a real vision for this city of someday having a really great city where you can travel from Tijeras Canyon all the way out to the West Mesa and just have a beautiful city to look at, uh, be proud to drive down 66, and you know, the way I see it now, with, with the way things are going, the city's hemorrhaging, especially in the area of public safety and homelessness. Um, we have a lot of problems in this city. And we have a lot of very important um, places where we can put our money, I think, better spent than on another entertainment venue. Um, Let's solve the problems that we already have. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Kathleen Burke, followed by Rosendo Nahad, followed by Chris Adil. Thank you, President Sanchez. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the City Council. My name is Kathleen Burke. I'm an 18-year resident of Albuquerque. I'm speaking tonight on behalf of myself only. It is very gratifying that Top Golf would like to locate in Albuquerque. I believe we are all grateful for their interest. I and nearly all of my associates would prefer that the city of Albuquerque preserve tax incentives for employers who hire a majority of full-time employees at wages well above the minimum wage. Again, we would like to see the city of Albuquerque preserve incentives for higher paying employers. I would like to wish Topgolf the very best in their future endeavors, both here in Albuquerque and elsewhere. I ask that you, our city councilors, support uh, the Honorable Mayor Keller's decision, decision to override Top Golf. Uh, please support uh, our mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Burke. R Rosendo Nahar, followed by Chris Cedillo, followed by our last speaker, Larry Guess. President Sanchez, Councilman, I'm here on, for the sake of time. I'm going to speak on behalf of uh, my brothers and sisters, the carpenters. They would all please stand. Um, and we're in support of this project. This is a much needed project for our area. Um, we have a lot of members of this community who have to travel three to four hours to be able to work in the construction industry. We have no work here at home. And you know, hearing the crowd and the concerns that they speak about and the community and how this concerns them, I mean, I think I have one word that will be able to help us all and it's apprenticeship. You know, if we instill the word apprenticeship and require that these companies doing these projects do belong to a, a state certified apprenticeship program that almost guarantees that it's local people that are doing the work. You know, I think it's only fair that the, that the people who are paying for these projects are allowed to work on these projects. You know, and a, an apprenticeship is one thing that will greatly help us in these projects that we're paying for. You know, the art project is one of the projects I came up to, to speak about. And you know, if we had a, something like an apprenticeship program where we required a company who are doing these projects to be part of an apprenticeship program, that would have guaranteed our community to be working on there. I'm also a union rep. I was out there visiting the art project several times. The guys doing the concrete work out there were from El Paso. From El Paso, the amount of money we paid on that project and we weren't even allowed to work on this project. When we allowed you know, subpar companies like Bradbury Stam to get the lowest bidder who's not even from this state to do this work, that affects us. We're all for this project, not only because of the construction work, but me myself, being a member of this community, I know we need something to do here. That's the reason why our, our child, our child is, are they're getting in trouble. There's nothing to do in Albuquerque. There's nothing for them. 
I'm personally, I'm not a golfer. I don't like golf, but I love top golf. It's one of the best things for me to do with my family when I've traveled to the ones out of state. So like I said, you know, instilling the word apprenticeship into these, into these projects, well, I think we're more solidified that we do the work. We, we, it's only fair that if we're paying for these projects, that we're allowed to build them ourselves. So we're in support of this project. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Rosendo. Chris Adil. Good evening, Council President Ken Sanchez, City Councilors. I am also support the mayor and his veto. I strongly recommend that all city councilors support the mayor and his veto. I trust the city voted him unanimously this year because they trusted him and they believe in him. He has his Harvard degree and the people of Albuquerque believe that he was going to be the person that's going to change Albuquerque. As you know, all incumbent city councilors want city election. But what I will say, you guys voted for the art project and we know what that turned out, except for my city councilor, Clarissa Pena. And now election year, election next year for all even city councilors, two, four, six, and eight, you can vote for this today, but remember, I'm going to keep tabs, and I'm going to vote and support the candidate that does vote for what the people want for Albuquerque. He can go and, and overwrite the mayor's veto, but I guarantee you, I'm going to keep a tab, and I'm going to make sure that whoever your opponent is for 2019, that uh, I'm going to get there. I'm going to support them as much as I can to see some incumbents get lot, lose their election. Uh, as you know, the art was a disaster. Uh, we're giving millions of dollars when we just increased the taxes on the Albuquerque people. July 1st, as, Ken, as the president, uh, council, uh, president uh, Ken Sanchez said, we just increased it three-eighths of a percent because we're in a financial bind, but yet we're going to go give all this money to a, a company that is out of state to build a top golf. To me, that's totally wrong, and I'm asking my city council, Clarissa Pena, to vote and uh, support the mayor's veto on this. I'm asking you personally for this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Last speaker on this agenda item, and I believe it's Larry Geis. May I pronounce it? That's Welcome. Correct. Thank you, Mr. President and counselors. I'm Larry Geis. I'm a proud member of Carpenters Local 1319, and I think this is going to be a good thing for Albuquerque for the jobs, and not only during the construction, but later when it's running and I think it's going to be a, a good use of a property that's been vacant for quite a long time and to finally get that um, sold and being productive so thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, that concludes uh, public comment on this agenda item. Uh, Councillor Gibson. Uh, thank you Mr. President. Um, I am going to move the um, if I can find it uh, move um, for, yeah, on um, EC 18169. I'm uh, going to move that. Um, and that would be a move to overwrite? Move to overwrite, exactly. Approving a project involving the Albuquerque Investors LLC and Topgolf USA. Albuquerque. And, uh, we have a motion and a second uh, by Councillor Jones. And Mr. President. Councillor Gibson. Before you call for a vo vote, I just have a few comments, if you would indulge me for just a minute. Go ahead and proceed. Um, thank you. Um, I, I've heard a lot of things, and it's, it's uh, I really want to share with everybody here, I really respect your opinions. I really do. But I, this is a complicated, sort of a complicated uh, project, the way it was, the way it's, it's funded. So. I'd like to just go over it just really quickly with everybody. Um, so there are three different parts of the city um, funding uh, that goes towards this project. There's $326,000 that has been designated for roads for the city. And uh, that's going to Top Golf because they are going to finish Culture Road all the way to Montano. So that's $326,000. There's $400,000 that's coming from the general fund that goes towards their, um, their construction. That's a total of $726,000 going to Topgolf. 
and they get that money once everything is completed. Once all the construction is done, is accepted by the city, and they open their doors to do business. Then we have, I believe it's a 60 day, or 30 or 60 day period of time to get them that, 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 uh, those funds. The last part of it is a $1.84 million. And that's, a ta that's tax increment finance coming through, or uh, it's lead of funding coming through uh, as a tax increment finance. And the increment is what the city has agreed to share with Top Golf, 50-50. The increment is the difference, basically, it is the difference in gross receipts tax, or what we normally think of as sales tax, between what we're collecting from it now, which is a big fat zero, and what we will be collecting from it once the, um, once it's, it's open for operation. So for every dollar of income tax, or income tax, I'm sorry, gross receipts tax that the city collects from that, we pay them one half of it until that $1.84 million is paid for. Now, we've had people look at this, um, uh, uh, you know, doing uh, analysis on this, on Top Golf and this particular um, uh, structure for funding it. Uh, it's written up so that will, it will be paid back within 20 years, period. It has to be pay, paid back, um, paid off within, uh, within 20 years. But the reality is because Top Golf is so darned uh, popular out there, uh, it, it looks like it's gonna be paid back in less than 10 years. This is a good return on our investment. Now. Say one other thing. When I first came in in, in 2013, uh, brand new to council, I was like a lot of you. I did not want to see any kind of help, any kind of, of, of city or, 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 or local dollars going towards a deal like this uh, in order to bring people uh, companies here to Albuquerque. I just I had a very black and white view of it. I'll tell you what, after being up here for a few years, it, you really see the landscape much differently. Um, this particular um, company coming here is a good thing for Albuquerque. If I had any doubts, I would not be um, you know, sponsoring this. Just to give you an idea, and this is really the last thing I'm gonna say, I'm gonna stop talking, we'll do the vote and, and go on. But the NFL has, uh, for 2017, had 17,253,000 uh, people go in to see their games. For 2017, for that entire, sep that entire uh, season, Top Golf. Same period of time for one year had, in, in all of this I just got just now from the internet, it's easy to get, 35,000 visits per day uh, uh, on average for each site, or per day, I'm sorry, uh, 365, and that was a total of thir almost uh, 13,000, 12,775. So this is a big deal for Albuquerque. $2.84 million sounds like a lot of money. It is a lot of money, but we are going to get more back. This is just an investment. That's all I have to say. Thank you for everybody who came down to talk. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Harris, and then Councilor Davis. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. And I didn't speak when I um, did not vote to support the project, and I just wanted to very briefly talk about why I'm not gonna support the override. I do support the project and would have supported some incentives, but this is just too much and does not protect the city. Albuquerque Investors, LLC. It's a Kansas limited liability company that was formed in August of 2017. Um, Albuquerque, LLC does not even own the land, but they will, but of course they'll be mortgaged. If the deal goes south, the bank will foreclose on a mortgage, and the city will be seeking to enforce its clawbacks against a Kansas limited liability company with no assets. Top Golf 
econ economist said that 60% was new money. I really doubt it. It just doesn't seem right to me. I think people in the Albuquerque area only have so much uh, disposable income. And in any event, I think we should not have given an increment to the uh, money that even Topgolf acknowledges as cannibalized grocery seats. The project participation agreement, which was proposed by the Albuquerque Development C Commission, was not even given to us. The council, we were not given a side-by-side -side analysis of why the ADC wanted one agreement over the other. Um, and in closing, I don't have any problem with the council putting forth projects. I think that uh, we are half the government. We are the governing body. But I think if we start out from different ends, like the council and the administration did, I'd like to see us spend a little bit more time in hammering out a compromise. Um, I just believe we could have negotiated a better deal for the city, and uh, I think we should have, and that's why I'm not going to support the override. Thank you. Councillor Davis. Thanks, Mr. President. And I just wanted to, to follow very quickly. I know we don't want to belabor this, but, you know, I, I agree from the very beginning. I think Mayor Keller was right about the way uh, and what we were trying to achieve with this project. Um, during his transition, the mayor and I met a couple of times specifically about economic development projects and how to update the old, the city's old LIDA ordinance to include and incentivize more living wage jobs and local uh, investments. And we've seen some of that from the administration, and I appreciate very much. The administration's talked to us here at this meeting. Um, and I met with the mayor and with some of the mayor's staff over the last month while we were on break, looking through some options to update the LIDA ordinance so that we could uh, change the terms in which we look at and evaluate projects. Uh, but the fact is, uh, this project is much different than the one we read about on the front page of the Albuquerque Journal early on. Um, this council changed a $2.8 million initial request from Topgolf um, so that uh, the amendments, as Councilor Gibson pointed out, that this council added after recommendations from the Development Council, which included the mayor's own appointees who recommended approval with some amendments, um, now say that that money, $700,000 for roads and construction, is only eligible to top golf as a reimbursement once they have finished construction, which is estimated to create $800,000 in new revenue for the city, essentially creating $100,000 for new economic development projects, and only if they meet that goal. And despite the fact that it will create a lot of jobs, we've added amendments that ensure that the public... Uh, job creations will only support the 123 full-time jobs, which as we heard at our last council meeting, average out to $16.50 an hour with benefits, $1.50 more than living wage in Albuquerque. That meets the standard for good economic development in Albuquerque by any standard I've heard any of us talk about. And they only get those if they show, not at the beginning of the year to hire those folks, but if they show that over the course of the year they hired at least that many people full-time at the rage weight that they're guaranteeing in that first year. And so they're not guaranteed a dollar unless they show us that they met the goals of creating more money for the, for the city and of hiring all those people at a better wage than living wage and proving that they've done that work and kept them employed for at least a year every year. To me, that seems like some basic, there are a lot of details, but the bottom line is, to me, that seems like a good model. And it meets the goals that we tried to set out early on when we started talking about changing it. Um, I think the difference is, at the same time, this council was considering another request by the mayor for a call center subsidy from the same fund to create 200 jobs at $4 less an hour for a downtown call center, but only because the journal and the news media didn't decide to profile the difference between the city council's version and the mayor's version. We have under any protest tonight from folks opposing the mayor's support for a call center at $12 an hour for downtown using the same funds. And it's not that we shouldn't consider that for some folks as creating a ladder, but I think it highlights the way the media has helped to draw out some of the differences. I think we've made this better. I think from the beginning we've seen the mayor drop some of his objections and I agree with them from the beginning, but I now think we've protected the city enough in that this company doesn't get any money unless they meet our goals, which are pretty progressive and ambitious and more than any other in incentive investment I've seen us do in my years on the city council um, and as an advocate in this city organizing for progressive values. So for that reason, I believe it's a good model that we should use for other investments and I'm willing to override the mayor's veto because I think we met those obligations to the city to create living wage jobs. Thank you. Councilor Borrego. Thank you, uh, councilors. Um, so on Friday, I came into the office 
because I've had people on both sides of the aisle call me, talk to me, meet with me, send me emails after emails. Um, you know, it's a, it's a difficult situation. So I thought on Friday, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna look at all of the, everything for myself because I've been advised by attorneys and you know, all sorts of people, um, including my constituents. And um, I thought, you know what, I need to sit down and review everything in detail. So I found three separate economic development studies, which I reviewed. One was done by um, the administration, one was done by the county, and one was done by the city council. And I looked at the numbers um, very closely. Um, I came to find, of course, and we all know this already, that the county is supporting this because they, the, uh, the county commissioners voted um, to support it and to provide additional funding. So I went back and I looked at um, the Local Economic Development Act and um, I read it again. And basically it says, at the, in the opening statement it says, uh, New Mexico Economic Development Department is granted authority to administer grants to local governments, municipality, and or county to assist expanding or relocating businesses that are qualified entities that stimulate economic development and produce public benefits pursuant to LIDA. All grants are funded on a strictly reimbursement basis. Um, and it goes on. I mean, it's a very long um, act. But having read that, I thought, okay, um, at our last meeting, one of the things that I mentioned is that we really need to make Albuquerque a destination point. Um, and in looking, thinking about, you know, economic development, I mean, what does that really entail? It, it entails providing jobs. And, you know, we can argue the type of jobs Oh, we should, we should argue um, for higher jobs, but what about the people that are not quite as educated or that are in school or seniors that need part-time jobs or, um, you know, somebody who only wants to work part-time. I've had two of my friends that used to work for the city are looking for part-time jobs. They're in their 50s. They only want to work part-time. So, um, you know, I think about it as a destination point and I think about the, the idea of economic development. And Albuquerque is a destination point. We have cities within two hours of us. And we need to stop thinking of just Albuquerque, you know, proper. We need to start thinking more regionally. We have Rio Rancho, you know, on, on the northwest area. We have Los Lunas. We have Belen, we have Socorro, we have Estancia, we have Moriarty, we have uh, Bernalillo, we have Gallup, Santa Fe, Española. I mean, these cities are not that far away. I grew up in New Mexico my entire life. My family, my uncles, my grandfathers, they all paid taxes to build this state and they fought in the wars to make sure that we had a good uh, life. So, I stop and think about the pay scale, and I think, you know, that's an issue that has bothered me. And so today, I had a meeting um, with Topgolf um, Albuquerque investors because I said to them, you know what, I'm not hearing, you know, I, I, I understand that in the agreement, which I, I reviewed, there's discussion about hiring local. And so I asked them, you know, about that, that um, situation as to whether or not, are we gonna hire outside of Albuquerque and bring the contractors in? I've seen it over and over, we all have. New Mexico has, in that way, been a victim. And they ensured me today that they will provide some sort of um, additional letter because I, I also t today, this morning, I think the mayor rolled out his economic development um, uh, program, which I read, by the way, and it talks about hiring local. So, um, and I called that meeting today with them 
and with the company that's working with Top Golf and Albuquerque investors. And they assured me that hiring local is something that they're very interested in doing. And I'm putting that, saying that tonight because I want that to be on the record. I, I want that, and I also spoke with um, the top golf officials. Um, and so, you know, I don't want to see another company come into Albuquerque that takes money away and puts it in another state. I don't want to see that. I want it to be invested locally. And I think really that's the definition that the mayor and the council are looking for is to ensure that we are going to work together as a community because honestly, I'm kind of tired of us versus them. It's not about the council against the administration. These are not the way we should be looking at issues in Albuquerque and it makes me it makes me really angry when I hear, you know, the media portraying it in that fashion because we're all looking for the best deal possible for the citizens of Albuquerque. So, you know, I, I worry a little bit that, you know, we only want top jobs in Albuquerque. There's people at other levels like the unions that need jobs because they have to leave the state to find those jobs. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, you know, the, the, the contract that has been looked at by our attorneys, by the attorneys from all sides, I guess, have the clawbacks in place to assure the public that we are not going to make some sort of a deal that you know, is not going to guarantee that those funds are going to not be protected. And so I think that, you know, it's time for us all as a community to come together on projects. So if Verizon comes to Albuquerque and they say, we want to work to open another call center, do we say, well, you're not in New Mexico, you're not, you're not uh, local, so we don't make a deal to bring a, a call center in? I mean, so, I mean, we need to really, really examine the way that we make deals and the way that we're thinking about how we're moving forward as a city together. Because I think that the mayor has the right idea about hiring local, but I think that the council also does. I think we've made some mistakes in the past, and if we keep harping on the past forever, we're not going to move forward as a city. So... Um, you know, I am going to support Top Golf because I think that, um, you know, when I talk about destination, I think about um, well, first of all, that site at Montgomery and uh, the freeway has been vacant forever, and there's a lot of homeless because I travel that way on a regular basis. So, what if we pulled some of those people into work at lower levels? I mean, how do we start to stimulate this economy? And we really, really need to start thinking in a little different way and, and stop this us versus them mentality as a city. And the other thing that I would like to say is PGA is associated with Top Golf, and I think it's time for us to start thinking a little bit bigger and out of the box. You know, Albuquerque is growing up, and we are becoming an international city. But if we keep thinking, and I do support small business, because I was one of those businesses on Central that was barely surviving. And that's why I ran for council. So anyway, I, I could go on and on, but I just want us to really think about, you know, what it is that we're providing. And um, just a side note, a few weeks ago I went to the movie on a Saturday night, and I went to Cottonwood Mall. And uh, there were lines. I couldn't get in. So I left, and I went to Jefferson to Rio 21 or whatever it's called, 24. Um, never got in. There was too many people waiting to get in. It was sold. Everything was sold out. So, like, what do you do? You know, move to Denver? Move to Phoenix, where there's other types of things to do? And what about the little the people that live in the small towns that come to Albuquerque to support our economy and find things to do, find recreation. It's not there.
So the other thing, and lastly, is Top Golf is not using grass. It's artificial turf. So their water is different from a, um, a regular golf course. It's more technology driven. So it's bringing new technology into Albuquerque. So with that said, I mean, we could give Top Golf to the Native Americans. I mean, they'd be happy to give them any incentives to come to, to their, to Buffalo Thunder or Sandia. You know, so seriously, I'm, I'm hoping that people will start looking at things in a different way and as the mayor does, but, and I support local. I do, but I think that we also need to look and, and be balanced. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? <coughs> Councilor Pena? I'll, I'll just try, I'll try to be brief. You know, I just really want to reiterate what, um, what Councilor Gibson stated and also what um, Councilor um, Davis stated, you know, um, the new administration came in after, you know, we had already been speaking over a year um, with Top Golf, and you know, I really think that they did their due diligence, and and I agree with um, um, uh, Councilor um, Davis in terms of, you know, the way our lead, our lead of funds are distributed. You know, this is an, the, the lead of funds aren't new, incentives aren't new to the city of Albuquerque. It's not something, it's something that we do. It's a tool that we use to incentivize business and to bring them, especially to areas that are blighted and, and in need of, of redevelopment. And I think this particular parcel is actually a, a prime example of where those funds need to be used. You know, um, we have lots of, we're our economy stagnant, you know, we're trying to encourage business to come to the city of Albuquerque, both small business and and bigger business. Um, right now with the economy the way it is, I see Top Golf and the incentive that we're trying to, that we're wanting to um, provide to them as small in comparison to our overall budget. Um, to our overall budget, and I, I really want to say that, you know, through their due diligence, they operated by the rules and procedures that we have in place. Um, do they need to be updated? I, I, took, I do gr agree that they, um, that they do. But um, with that being said, there has been some amendments to this outside of that that kind of hold their feet to the fire in other ways. And you know, I really appreciate Councilor Gibson's um, amendment at, at the last meeting in particular. So um, for those reasons, you know, I, I will be su supporting um, the override. And, and I do want to mention, you know, Unser Crossing, for example, you know, that's in my neighborhood and, and years ago we were trying to get that redeveloped and, you know, we had opposition from other neighborhood groups and this is outside of me being elected in office and we had opposition from uh, other neighborhood groups to try to redevelop this blighted piece of property and through that opposition, you know, it was a, it was a $1 million incentive to kind of build the roads and to do some other things so that we could bring Lowe's and some other retail to the area and, you know, we heard this whole argument about the cannibalization and no new net dollars coming to the area and through all that you know at the end of the day um, um, Councillor Jones was part of helping to make that work out we didn't end up getting the incentive but through all that disagreement and and discord that was happening during that time we lost the project and the the economy we had a downturn in the economy and then we lost the project you know so we still have answer crossing and and those are areas when i look at this as an example those are areas that we really need to focus on and do these types of things so for those reasons i'll be supporting the override thank you and as one of the co-sponsors uh, i'd like to close by first thanking those that uh, are here tonight in support of the mayor's uh, override on the veto, and also those individuals that are here in support of Top Golf, we as a council have worked uh, now probably over 12 months, if not longer, on this initiative, and I truly believe this will be a multi-generational uh, facility that will attract young kids, millennials, and our senior citizens. But more importantly, this is a 40 million dollar project coming to Albuquerque, and I don't want to go into uh, and reiterate what uh, Councilor Gibson has already stated. Uh, regarding a lot of the uh, incentives that are going to be given. And we, I will say one thing, that we have worked diligently in working with the ADC and working through the process and also taking some of the recommendations of Mayor Keller to assure that we are protecting the taxpayers of this community. I believe this project will be an asset to our community for many, many years to come. And I also am a local businessman and I also have concerns for our local businesses. But I think with the net new 
uh, business coming to our community, you know, I know the trampoline company is concerned, and they have every right to be because now they have additional competition. But I truly believe that competition many times is healthy for our community. And I will hope that the trampoline company along with Cliffs will continue to thrive and with the additional people coming to Albuquerque because Top Golf will attract over 500,000 people to Albuquerque every year. That, it's gonna be a lot of the locals, but I think other people from across the state and across the country will be coming to Top Golf to play golf. I, I myself have never been to a Top Golf venue. I know that any time an individual talks about Top Golf, uh, they are excited about it, their eyes light up, and it's been a real positive experience for those individuals that have gone. But I just believe with this $40 million investment into our community, it will also create construction jobs, and hopefully you know, those construction jobs will go to our local carpenters uh, union contractors because I mean, they can do the work just as effectively as anyone else. But I think this is an important issue, and it's very complex. I mean, when I first looked at this issue in initially, I had a lot of questions regarding the safeguards to the taxpayers of this community. I truly believe and feel very confident that we've done our due, due diligence as a council to assure that, our, that the taxpayers' dollars will be protected. And I would hope that this uh, override passes uh, this evening, that the administration will work very closely uh, with the developers in assuring that this project gets off the ground and that the people of Albuquerque will benefit from this new venue. But again, I think this is it was a challenging process. It's taken over a year. I also want to thank uh, Cynthia Jaramillo, from, uh, the Director of Economic Development, uh, for her work. We met a couple of times in this, on this issue. But it's going to be a tough, it's been a tough process, but I truly believe in the end, we, if we vote for this override, we will have made the right decision this evening. Any other questions? We have a motion and a second on the floor to override the mayor's veto. All those in favor, raise your hand and say yes. Yeah. Yes. Those opposed? That carries on a seven to two vote. And it required six votes. Uh, Ms. Nair? Uh, thank you, Council President Sanchez, Councilors. I just wanted to sort of uh, close this up by saying I think we, we agree about more than we disagree on this. We all think Top Golf is great. We all want Top Golf for Albuquerque. Uh, we all agree that there need to be jobs at different wage levels, which is why we have supported call centers and we will. Um, the only thing we've really disagreed on is whether this is going to be making the pie bigger or cannibalizing the existing pie. And as you pointed out, uh, Councilor Borrego, there were differing economic studies, and, um, but, but this is like a normal, healthy demo democracy process. So we're going to use our checks, and you're going to use your balances, and then at the end of the day, when the votes are done, we're going to work together, and we're going to close the book on this, and we're going to make sure that the project is a success as much as we possibly can. So we just appreciate the respectful dialogue between our administration and the council. We appreciate those suggestions that you did take into account. And uh, I appreciate that from time to time, we're going to agree to disagree. And that's OK and healthy. Thanks. Thank you, Ms. Nair. And that does carry on a 7 to 2 vote. Uh, six votes are required to pass the legislation. OK, we are going to start under final action. Uh, this is item B, Councillor Pena and Councillor Davis, R-39. Councillor Pena. Thank you, Mr. President. Actually, R-1839, I apologize. So R-1839 is a resolution. I, I urge your support and, and, you know, and I make a motion to to pass it. Anyway, this is affirming the City Council's support of pursuing legal action against the opi opioid manufacturers and distributors for the op opioid drug use crisis in Albuquerque fueled by their improper promotion and oversupply of those drugs. Um, you know, this is something that, you know, with our, the city of Albuquerque and the, and the state that it is today, this is an epidemic not only in the city but, it, but in our country, and I think this is a, a good a faith effort in, in terms of trying to address it with the um, with the pharmaceuticals in terms of, um, I think they're misleading ways of how they've tr um, tried to say that opioids are, are, um, are good for us. You know, um, one of the things um, that the lawsuit would allege is that the companies falsely advertise that uh, risk of low addiction, addiction can easily be identified and managed, signs of addiction behavior are, are um, pseudo addiction and require more opioids. You know, the list goes on and on and, and this is something that I think um, we need to begin to tackle uh, as a city. So I would urge your support. Councilor Davis. 
Oh, excuse me, Mr. President. Thank you. Uh, and thanks, Councilor Pena, you covered it. Uh, but I think it's a great way for us to start picking up on the next thing uh, after our last vote. I want to say this is something that the new administration came in and sat down and talked to us about from the very beginning. It was on their priority list. And I appreciate them not wasting a minute to push forward and find and be sure that Albuquerque is included in those front leading cities that are looking not just to how our police and fire respond to this crisis, but how we hold drug companies accountable for their uh, malfeasance and failure to really tackle this and to pass on uh, the, the consequences of their actions down to cities like ours. I appreciate that very much, and that's our intent tonight, is to show our support for the administration in tackling this and being a leader nationally in it. And we want to appreciate the administration for taking the lead and working to do that. So urge your support. Do we have anyone signed up to speak? Okay, we have a motion and a second on the floor for R-39. All those in favor signify by saying yes. Yes, those opposed say no. That carries unanimously. We're going to go back uh, to general public comments. Uh, there will be a two-minute time limit. The light at the podium will be green for the first minute and a half. Then the bell will ring and the light will turn yellow, indicating you have 30 seconds remaining. At the two-minute mark, the light will turn red, indicating your time has expired. Okay, I will call the first five names and be prepared to come to the front and be prepared to speak. Don Schrader, Simon Polakowski, Rudolph Serrano, Sister Agnes, Ms. Mark, and Mike Alvarez. Proceed, welcome. 73 years ago this week, the United States atom bombed Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Japan. The United States murdered more than 180,000 people. That's over 60 times the number of people murdered at the World Trade Center and the Pentagon on 9-11-2001. The United States is the only nation ever to atom bomb cities of people. Eyes melted in their sockets, Noses and mouths became open holes. Friends did not recognize each other. Some no longer had faces. Many people completely evaporated. Is this treating other people as we want to be treated? Is this loving our neighbors as ourselves? Is this doing good to our enemies? Are you proud of Sandia and Los Alamos weapons labs? Daily for decades, they have designed hundreds of nuclear weapons, much worse than the Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombs. A life-giving job at minimum wage is infinitely better than a mass murder job at Sandia or Los Alamos, no matter how high the pay or the prestige. Talk about street gangs showing no conscience in drive-by shooting. What about gangs of scientists showing no conscience about preparing to bomb cities and terrorize whole nations? I have paid no federal income tax for 39 years. I refuse to pay for US wars and nuclear weapons. Thank you, Simon Polakowski. Rudolph Serrano. Council President, Council. Um, I've been attending the table board meetings. I understand that there is an ad hoc committee which is going to advise on, I believe, the awarding of the next contract for the management of public access channels. I was wondering if this ad hoc committee uh, is in accordance with the Open Meetings Act. I was also wondering if there will be minutes uh, that the public can read what this ad, ad hoc committee discusses. I also wonder if this will be recorded. Uh, that is my question. I also asked that of the cable board. Uh, also, I was at a meeting. Kirtland Air Force presented its uh, did a presentation for the public, and a city employee came as a private person and asked. Uh, if these meetings could be recorded, and she left before I got up and commented. I thought it'd be great if 
government TV could record these meetings because they're usually at times people are just finishing work, eating dinner, middle of the week. You know, the average person can't rush over to, this was at the uh, African American Cultural Pavilion. It was very hot that day, middle of the week. It'd be nice if it was recorded and maybe shown on uh, government TV so people can see w what's being discussed concerning the Air Force spill. Uh, and uh, it was kind of uh, awful that government TV wasn't there. This is an issue uh, that concerns, I believe, uh, everyone in the Rio Grande Valley. Also, uh, concerning today's anniversary, uh, the so-called so creator created everything from absolutely nothing. And uh, it's most unfortunate that this pseudoscience has been dedicated to making less than nothing because if it was nothing, it wouldn't be harmful. And of course, true science is for the enhancement of life, not its enslavement or its destruction. Thank you. Thank you. Rudolph Serrano. And good evening again. Uh, I just have a couple of points. Uh, well, we're moving into the new city, and uh, I was thinking in those $3 that, uh, you know, that not getting uh, recycling, and uh, we have taxpayers' uh, money right there, and they're pull up. And uh, I was thinking doing our own recycling community. And I don't know if we can do this as a, all the city going into the business as a company. That way we don't go socialist. But this is a great opportunity for the city to, to enter into the crisis. We have a world crisis with plastics and we can start doing our own recycling. And uh, for that, we just need to participate more in that. But I, I, I'm gonna see if I can get a venue with Mr. Winter because I know he's the good, good, good man for that. And uh, will be the city willing to put like at least 30% of the contracts from plastic produced by, by us here? Because what, uh, what I see like in a, a lot of industries, we get everything with China, and we're in war with China, but we're still buying everything for them, and uh, it's, it's time to support, uh, you know, our government, you know, in, in, in that uh, initiative. I know that I use fast, really super fast. Marijuana Chamber of Commerce, give me a break. We have crime in the street, like it's crazy. Last night I was walking in Second and uh, in Central, and somebody got killed uh, one block away from me when I was taking my daughter just to the bus. You know, and we're planning and to, put in, and to put like a center for marijuana and, and drugs here in the city. I think we, we have to be careful, you know, and uh, how much crime we want to support here. So that's, uh, that's what I have today. And uh, uh, I hope you guys have a great night. And I think you did the right decision, you know. You, you know what you're doing. I know that. Uh, but we need to support uh, your, our mayor with his new initiative. I think he, he's in the right track. And... Uh, and, and let's do it. Have a great night. Thank you. Sister Agnes Kazmarek. Hope I pronounced that right, sister. Yes, <laughs> um, Good evening, Councilor and President Sanchez and um, Councilors. My name is Sister Agnes Kazmarek. I've stood before you before about the homeless issue. And, and you can see the homeless issue is back again in the public spotlight. I want to thank Councilor Diane Gibson for her working with the, uh, Commissioner Debbie O'Malley on the Tani Home Village. I am glad that this project is moving forward. The reason I'm here tonight, in your last meeting in June, floor substitute R1832, sponsored by my district councilor, Isaac Benton, had requested the mayor's administration for a name and a vendor for the $30,000 contract for the design and the site plans for the Behavior Health Initiative Permanent Single Site Housing Project. I am on the Supportive Housing Committee and the Vice Chair, but my comments are on my own. I was part of the conversation of that proposal. So I went to look at today's council agenda. There was a deadline of August 6, 2018, and the floor substitute is not on your agenda. So I checked with the mayor's office and with council services. There were no updates. So my question is, and we know that housing for the homeless is significant, but what is the next step for Flora Substitute R18? And I am asking the mayors and the city council, 
what about the naming of the vendor? And it was an article in the journal on 622 asking what the mayor's office was going to do and what the council was going to do. That's my question. Councilor Benton. Sister Agnes, thanks for coming down and, and uh, for following the following and, and supporting the project. Um, I think we're we're on track. Um, okay. uh, Although that deadline, that specific deadline, you know, uh, was put out there, what we have tonight is, is a bill that, that right. uh, we're, we're moving forward right. to uh, with a bill that was introduced tonight by the council mm -hmm. that will appropriate the funds. Right. So then what's left for the administration is between now and the next meeting is we're, we're expecting that they're already pretty far along. Mm -hmm with an actual, actual agreement with okay. the successful uh, proposer. Okay. So that's where we are. I, like, I'm sure the administration would like to clarify further, but, but we're, we're moving forward, so that's the good news. Mr. President, and um, I would agree with Councillor Benton. We have, uh, we're just a few days away from finishing the, uh, the participation agreement that's required with the vendor to uh, finalize the contract, and we hope to have a uh, final approval by the council at the August 20th meeting. Thank you, and I appreciate the work because I think this will be important for the homeless and also that the county, and this is a collaboration between city and county, and it's been um, very wonderful to work on this project. So I thank you for the opportunity to speak. Thank you. Mike Alvarez, Ted, followed by Tad Naminsky followed by Ron Wallace. Howdy. All this money that you guys are going to uh, pay uh, top golf, I wish it would go to the nurses that we have. We're shorthanded on nurses. We're shorthanded in police department. We're shorthanded in the fire department. And then every time I call the, the 3 one, I mean the 911 or the police department, I'm, I'm there on the phone for 15, 20 minutes, they're telling me in English that I got the non-emergency uh, line, and then they talk to me in Spanish, and cops never show up. One night, it was the following day that the police department called me on my phone saying, we're sorry, we didn't have no cops to send you. What are we going to do? Take the, the situations into our own hands, and whatever the outcome would be, they're going to be charging me for for uh, interfering as a police officer or, or trying to be a cop. We need to do something better than just paying other companies to bring their business in this town. There's, there's, there should be other businesses that would like to get out where they're at to come to Albuquerque if the crime rate would be going down. For eight years, nobody even bothered about the crime rate, the burglaries, the murders, the car thefts. You guys were too busy building apartment complexes and those apartment complexes are only 10% uh, occupied from here to uh, uh, Berlin and, I mean, not Berlin, um, oh shoot, uh, 12th Street, 4th Street, all, all these places you guys got brand new apartments. And then the buildings that you built before you get to San Mateo, uh, out of 12 uh, buildings, there's only one office occupied. Past San Mateo, you got 10 or 12 uh, buildings at our offices. You only got three occupied. Is that the numbers we're going to continue going on from day, day and day and day? You guys are losing money. We're losing money. Thank you. Tad Naminsky, Ron Wallace. Thank you. My name is Ted Nemiski. Um, well, I am surprised uh, hearing that uh, so many millions uh, voted today to, uh, to the Trump, the investor Trump, this liberal socialist council. Well, luckily that is James Trump, not Donald Trump. Now, I do have, let's say, I do have house. Pay mortgage. Want to convert the garage to one bedroom. 
I can do it without permit. Well, how much that's, how much that's gonna cost me? What I have to do? Do I have to hire instructional engineer, architect? Hell with architect, I can design on the computer. Go look for other ways to find a job. Uh, architects and engineers. I have, uh, my son has master in engineering, but he don't live here, he lives in Mesa, Arizona. <sighs> now, that's what we get when we live in democratic capitalism. That's what is it. Democratic capitalists who are such liberal minded, it, it is disease, mental disease, imposing taxes to the ends of all kind, fees to citizens who put them to the office, collecting money for the city. Oh yes, Trudy Jones, you go you down with your project. I Mr. Minsky, your time has to expired. Sue city, Sue city Mr. Everyone Minsky, your time has expired. Lost cars. Next speaker, Von Wallace. Followed by Nicholas Shayek Snader. Welcome, Ron. Uh, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, President Sanchez and fellow council members. Uh, we're just here to, we just want to ask a question and hopefully y'all can either look into it or see what's going on. We, we've been trying to work with the public access and, and uh, educational access and community access uh, channel to try to bring our community in a partnership uh, with the city to improve our mobility, uh, be able to do recognition. We want to use something that's already there for the public, but right now, we've been waiting for over a year to be able to get access to that, the, that opportunity because of, um, I guess the RFP is still out. It's, it's, and they, we've been looking at, looking for it for two months. And it's still, uh, and it's, I think it's been two months and two weeks from when they told us it was gonna be available. All we want to do is be able to partner with whoever gets the RFP so our community, we have plans for our community. We've already lost the opportunity for what we wanted to do with the schools because the RFP still is lingering behind. So if somebody can help us to find out what the status is, why it's so delayed, and, and, and what, how we can become, get more information on who might get it or who's getting it so we can start the process of uh, becoming a partner with them. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Yard, do we know where that process is at? Uh, Mr. President, and, and Ms. Uh, Nair can correct me if I'm wrong, I believe that the, the ad hoc committee has been um, convened to look over those RFPs. Is, is that correct? Ms. Nair. <laughs> Thank you, Council President Sanchez. Uh, yes, so the period to respond to the RFP is closed. There were a number of bidders. Uh, the committee is formed uh, to the earlier gentleman's question. It's, it's not an ad hoc committee of a public meeting nature. It's a procurement code uh, committee that reviews the bids. There have been some delays in, in scheduling um, with some of the, the folks on that committee, but I'm hoping that we can drive that to a close so we can complete consideration of the RFP, and then that becomes public sort of in due course as all RFP considerations do. Do we have a time frame? Uh, we're trying to move it as quickly as possible. There's uh, <laughs> just one, one issue in scheduling that hopefully maybe you can help us resolve. Thanks, Ms. Snyder. Thanks. Thanks, Ron. Next speaker is Nicholas Shayek Snyder. Probably mispronounced that. <coughs> Kathleen Burke, and the last speaker will be Brian Eddy. Welcome. Good evening, Council. My name is Nicholas Schecksider, and I am a, I've been living in the city of Albuquerque for all my life. It's been 23 long years, but I plan on living here just a bit longer. I am an aspiring entrepreneur, but as is, there was something I've noticed um, as being a person who's fascinated with the way cities move, the way they breathe, and how they function. 
I was recently in a T-bone accident that totaled my car and practically messed up my shins, and so now I have to walk. Uh, taking the bus is not a big problem. I'm not asking for the bus system to be revamped or buses become more frequent because we don't even have a lot of ridership, at least for some routes. But as is, it's exhausting day in and day out to uh, navigate the city because the majority of Albuquerque outside of downtown is not really walkable. When I talk about walkable, I don't mean as in I can't walk to certain places because there's a weird obstruction in the way. I'm talking about the walk isn't interesting, it's not safe, or it doesn't have the feeling of being safe, and there's nothing really I can do about it. There are, there are times where when I walk, I walk on certain boulevard streets that the sidewalk is two and a half to three feet wide. And there might be a buffer zone for a bike lane, but that still doesn't help the fact that there are cars that speed 45 to almost 60 in my opposing direction. There are certain areas where there isn't even a sidewalk available. As is, I want to come back here. I want to speak with someone further about making Albuquerque a little bit more walkable. If it means putting trees along the boulevards to at least shade us, if it means to at least, <coughs> uh, sorry. That's okay, if, thank you, Nicholas, for coming down. Councilor Benton. I, I just wanna thank you for coming down and waiting and, and uh, taking the time to, to uh, speak about this. It's something that, that, that I care greatly about and also I think the council uh, has voted uh, unanimously in the past to support uh, what we call complete streets policy anyway. And, and we also recognize, I think any of us who lived here a long time that the city was built for cars. This city was built for cars. It wasn't built for walking. The old parts of the city were. Yeah. And, and they're reasonably walkable. And at the same time, you know, we live in a desert. We do need street trees on our boulevards and our sidewalks for, for just basic comfort. And, uh, and with demographics the way they are, you know, younger people, um, less and less able really to afford a car, or if they really want to get ahead, they might be better off without a car. I'm, not, I'm sorry that you lost your car, but, but I mean, I really appreciate your, your, your passion about this, and um, I just want you to know we have passed city policies saying that we're going to turn the corner on this, and, but it's a long, it's a long slog, and, but I appreciate your interest in it. There's also a group uh, that's out, it's not just the city, it's a, it's a multi-jurisdictional group that's mm -hmm. called the Complete Streets. Uh, uh, I'm gonna, now, now that I said it, I'm gonna remember. It's a Complete Streets Committee and, and, and people who are advocating for this. So it's pretty widespread. If you wanna contact my office, you know, we'll get you in touch with them. And, and I think there are a lot of opportunities to, to be, stay involved with it. Council Borrego. Um, I, I would just like to encourage you to um, possibly uh, visit one of the COG meetings for the Transportation Board because um, as, as the counselor indicated, you know, there's a lot of work that's being done regarding that, especially since DOT, uh, one of their studies just um, said that Albuquerque was one of the worst cities in the nation and actually I think we're number one for walking and pedestrian safety. And so I, it, this is something that I worry about in my district because it seems like, you know, our sidewalks and our streets get smaller and we get more and more houses and they're kind of congested. So I, I really think that it might behoove you to maybe a, attend one of those transportation board meetings and, and let your comments be known. Uh, excuse me, where? Uh uh, there, uh, it's it's called uh, the Council of Governments, and there's a transportation, and I can get with you after, if you'd like, or I can just write it down for you and give it to you. Okay. okay. Thank you, Nicholas. Thank you. Our uh, next speaker, Kathleen Burke, followed by Brian Eddy. I think they have left. Uh, let's go ahead and go real quickly to announcements, Councilor Pena.
you, Mr. President. There will be a Finance and Government Operations Committee meeting Monday, August 13th at 5 p.m. in the Council Committee Room on the ninth floor. Council Borrego. Oh, dear. <laughs> Sorry, I was writing the information down for this young man. Uh, Mr. Chair. I can read that for you. Thank you. There will be a Land Use Planning and Zoning Committee meeting on Monday, August the 15th at 5 p.m. Thank in you. the Council Committee Room on the ninth floor. And let's real quickly go to, there are two items under public hearings. Uh, the first item is item A, EC-18-7. Uh, Dr. Joe Vias, Westside Coalition of Neighborhood Associations, appeals the decision of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, this matter has been withdrawn by the applicant, so I move uh, to accept that withdrawal. Second. We have a motion and a second by Councillor Benton. Any questions? All those in favor, signify by saying yes. Yes, those opposed say no, and let's go to item B under uh, public hearings, and that's AC 18-8, Dr. Joe Vias, Westside Coalition of Neighborhood Associations, appeals the decision of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, this matter has also been withdrawn by the applicant. I make a motion to accept the withdrawal. Second. We have a motion in two seconds. Any questions? See none, all those in favor, signify by saying yes. Yes, those opposed say no. And we will be taking a dinner break at this time and return in about 30 minutes.